Good morning. It is August the 18th, 2017. Time to kick off another trading day with our customary disclaimer. Hypothetical simulated performance results have certain limitations. Unlike an actual performance record, simulated results do not represent actual trading. Also, since the trades have not been executed, the results may have under overcompensated for the impact of any of certain market factors, such as lack of liquidity. Simulated trading programs in general are also subject to the fact that they're designed with the benefit of hindsight. No representation being made that any account well or is likely to achieve profit or losses similar to those shown. Well, um, the chaos, the cacophony, the noise, the scream, the outright lies from the mainstream media are taking their toll. And um, Trump's been able to do a lot with uh, executive orders, but the next guy that can come along could change them back the other way. So without legislation, uh, Trump's programs are easily taken the other way. And there's legitimate concern that is, is he going to be able to get anything passed? There's only 12 days of work in September. A lot has to be done. And uh, Trump's wall, Trump's tax package, Trump's Obamacare have been successfully um, stymied and killed by the Republicans. Uh, they control who? Control the presidency, the Senate, the Congress are passing nothing. So uh, the D.C. establishment, both sides of the aisle, uh, mainstream media are doing their best to take Trump down. Yesterday, Cohen, uh, there was a tweet out that Cohen was resigning from the White House. That was the first thing that broke the market. Then the Barcelona terror attacks um, hit the market and took it lower. Uh, the Dow was off some 278 points yesterday. The equity markets around the globe outside of China sold following the U.S.'s lead. And we awakened this morning to lame duck articles about Trump, and they could be right. Um, Bob Corker in Chattanooga last night uh, got his digs in at um, President Trump. So Trump's attacked on all sides. And for um, and why is he attacked? Because he's trying to do what he promised to do that got him elected. So markets do not like uncertainty. Markets do not like the chaos coming out of Washington, D.C. They don't like the fact that the laws are not being passed. As promised, we have throw terrorism in Europe on top of that, uh, throw the Antifa attacks on the West Coast and now on the East Coast in uh, Charlotte, um, although you don't see their name mentioned much in the press. Um, and, you know, I got a trading profit right here. Uh, maybe I'll just book some of that. And I think that's what we're facing today. So. I imagine the ES's first move will be up to find resistance. That should pause financials. Um, and then if the E-mini breaks later in the session, that should bring in buying into financials. So our first sell is 27 to 31. And the idea that the E-mini might rally a little bit at first before they take it down. Sell 2 is 3 to 7 on the buy side, 17 to 21, buy 1 by 2, 9 to 13. And today's news, consumer sentiment, 94. And Baker Hughes rig count, I don't think it'll get any higher due to the price of oil coming down, but we'll see. 1169, 949. I believe we probably have pretty big commitment of rigs in the United States probably not going to get any larger. But you know, it's funny, um, and they're all from the left, uh, Democrat politicians, and um, one of them yesterday, a uh, black female, and I forget where she was from, called, openly called, uh, or said she hoped that President Trump got assassinated. I mean, where have we ever seen language like I mean we just haven't it's um we we live in amazing times it's really sad you know um 
our government has always prided, our country has always prided itself on the peaceful transition of power. Uh, it's not happening this time. Okay, uh, looking at, we're at 25 right now, so number one is 28 to the buck. Sell 3 to 7. Sell 11 to 15. On the buy side, 16 to 20. Buy 9 to 13. And buy uh, 29 to 01. Now, one thing we might look for today is where is the 50 lot trader? And if the market starts to sell, if the 50 lot trader is buying every down tick, that means we've got the feds out there supporting the market. Traders know this, they'll see it, and they'll back away from the short side. And the rally, if it happens, it's an if, will come from the trading community uh, starting to cover their shorts. It is the weekend. And quite often the Fed will operate early in the session just to make sure we have a, um, an orderly market. Selling doesn't get out of hand and then they will back away later in the session. They'll let it sell. Um, so, um, well, we'll just have to see. We'll have to watch. Watch for that. But we had a great day yesterday in the E-mini. And why did we have a great day in the E-mini? The uh, Fed allowed the market to sell. Okay, gold. We finally got our 1300 I think that I've been talking about for over a month. Um, and uh, we got there. So um, if the uh, stock market sell today, we'll go a little higher. If the stock markets don't sell today, we'll come back and get some profit taking before the weekend. So our first sell will be 3 to 5. It's very aggressive. It's where resistance is right now, followed by 8 to 10. On the uh, buy side, uh, the 95, 97 to get started. Work this area right in here. And then 90 to 92. Let them get stops below the overnight session. Okay, looking at the euro, when I looked at it early this morning, it was sideways, not doing a lot one way or the other. We'll see if that is still the case. It's like we got a seller at 75 and we got a buyer um, below 40. That's kind of where we were last night. So, selling 65 to 75, sell one. 90 to the buck, sell 2. Buy 30 to 40. And then 117, even 117, 10. But we see it all the time. The market hates uncertainty. And um, we're getting it this morning and with the talk of lame duck or outright calls for or hope that uh, Trump gets assassinated. It's not good for the market. And if you had bucks to put into the market, you'd probably think twice about doing that. So it's, to me, it's down whether the Fed comes in, steps up to the plate, and gives us an orderly market this morning. Okay, crude was up a little bit. Um, we have Baker Hughes today. The U.S. rig count is 949. I don't think it'll get any higher. So, uh, looks like we're going to try to trade higher right here. So, 4750, 4775, sell one. 
48, 48 and a quarter, sell two. We talked about yesterday backwardation in the Brent contracts. And that's where you'll pay a premium right now, but you don't think you won't pay a premium in the back months. It's going to be discounted. And that's bullish from a supply. Uh, it tells you that maybe the market is tightening or coming closer to being in balance. 46.75, 47 by one. And then 46 and a quarter, 46.50 by two. So I'm kind of looking for a trading range right here. It may take 25s to get in. We'll put a question mark right there. The sell might be 25 to 50. I think we can get a little bit higher based on yesterday's action in the overnight, but somewhere between 20, 47, 25, and 50, we might find a seller. And to the E-mini. Okay, again, I, I've talked about this many, many times. In the old days, the old outcry days, the w there was a group of very well capitalized, very large S&P traders that would absorb all the buying and selling that there was on imbalance on the opening. And there would be no shorts, so there'd be no no buys in the market when the opening bell rang. And because they were on the opposite side of those orders, the market would move down if they'd eliminated all the buy orders, and it would move up if they'd eliminated all the sell orders so these guys could make money. So we were schooled, or grew up being schooled, that um, you know, if everything, the homework and the analysis says sell it, don't be surprised if the market, the first move is to higher prices. So that's where we are. You can see, do low volume numbers play? Yes, they do. Um, so our first sells in this 33 to 35 area, revising that up from early this morning, I had it at 30, we've come higher. And the second sell will be 38 to 40. On the buy side, uh, first buy will be 24 to 26. I think the best support is at 24, 18, 24, 20. And the second buy will be 20 to 22. So we moved it up a little bit. And what we're looking for is that if the 50 lot trader is buying every down tick, the Fed is supporting the market. And it doesn't mean they're going to be there all day, but they just don't want the bottom to fall out of the market. And uh, they will let it sell as long as it's orderly, but they don't want the bottom falling out of the market. Or they didn't under Obama's administration. We'll have to see how they're going to treat Trump. That we don't know. So um, the news, consumer sentiment, 94. Baker Hughes rig count, U.S. rig count was 949. My guess is that will not get bigger. Uh, that's a pretty small sample size. Does not have the impact that um, consumer confidence does, but it is a number, and it's the only number we're going to have today. So, what will the Fed do on the opening, and how will consumer confidence impact the market? Okay, it's going to take a bit to get everything up and uh, published and in the right spot. I'm going to get busy on that. I'll be back with you as soon as possible.